Everyone, today we're going to mod a PS1. What we're going to use is some Kynar wire, a piece of breadboard, screwdriver, our pick programmer, a chip holder, our pick chip, some desoldered braid, soldering iron, some electrical tape at the back there, glue gun, and of course the PS1 itself. So here's our PS1. Um, if we turn it over, I've already removed the screws, but you'll find there are three screw holes on the bottom here, and there is three at the top here, one here, one here, and one hidden behind this warranty sticker here. Now you can peel it back and unscrew it like I have, or you can just pierce through with your screwdriver and turn to remove it. So let's lift the lid of our PS1, and inside you'll see the laser unit, and what you want to do is remove this ribbon cable here, give it a light tug, this ribbon cable here, if you lift up the laser unit like that, you be able to get a better pull and just pull and it'll come free. Gently rock and there we go. Remove this. Put it somewhere safe again. Right, so now we want to remove the main board. So lift it up and give it a bit of a rock and a pull and it comes free. And put the base somewhere safe. So here we have now a fully disassembled PS1. Now what we're going to do so we're going to put that to the back a second and we're going to deal with our breadboard our chip holder we're just going to solder that into place and cut some tracks for it so let's place it where we would like it and uh, place it to this side cut the copper tracks in between the legs so the legs don't short with one another let me get a tool to do that with it left and right and as you can see cut that track there. So just keep on doing it all the way down. Right as you can now see we've got a line of cut tracks so when we place in our chip holder these legs are no longer going to bridge. So now what we're going to do is we're going to solder this in place. So what you do is you heat up the leg, you don't heat up the solder, heat up the leg and then put the solder to the leg like so and then remove the iron. Once you've soldered it in it's a good idea to run a knife along the tracks if it runs through like so, you know there's no bridges. If it stops, then you've probably got a bridge. So run it along every track. And if it runs through nice and smooth, there's no bridging, which there isn't. So now we've got our chip soldered in place, our chip holder in place, and our breadboard. And now our chip will just slot in to this chip holder, like so. Which means we can remove it at a later date and reprogram it or add new chips or whatever so let's remove it now and we'll go and program this chip and then we'll be ready to uh, solder it into our playstation so let's get our programmer we want four slots up the dot facing the top there and we are let's lock that in place now in the zip clip that's like 13 where it goes in and I'll come back to you as I'm about to program it. I just need to go boot up the computer I'll be using. This is a K150 programmer. It's a clone that I got off eBay. Right, so we're in our programming application here. We select the chip type, which is a 12F629 down here. So just got the drop down menu, pick the chip. Um, we place the chip in the programmer, as shown earlier. Then we click File and Load, and we load the hex. The hex we're loading is from Gary OPA back in 2008 that's it so it's loaded and then we basically just click pro program and let's program the chip program it complete now if we read back the chip we can see our data is there which is what we wanted and verify data verified so let's go back to the PlayStation and solder in this chip the install diagram is a very easy install by the looks of it. Two wires to the chip, legs six and eight, and then a single wire to jump those two points. Kind of wire with a tiny bit of solder on the end. So we've got to do this very small resistor that I've got a solder to. And with a 40 watt iron, which is very hot, I don't want to be in too quick and knock it off the board. So, I mean, it's be on the board too long and knock it off. So here we go, let's solder this in.
there we go. There we go. Wire there and a wire here. Again, heat the component. Bring the solder to it. I'm going to bear these ends and solder them into place. So let's do that now. Right, let's leg it in. I'm going to glue this chip into place here before I solder in six because I'm not going to be able to do it after I solder it in. So I'm just going to put a layer of hot glue down on top of this chip, silicon glue, and just squish this down on top, cut away this excess bit of stringy glue. So we just realised that this heat shield is not going to go back on with our breadboard so we're going to remove the breadboard and solder directly to pins legs uh, 6 and 8 of the chip we can desolder it if we ever want to and this isn't going to work like this which is a bit of a shame we'll just cut the wires off There we go, that's that off. That's wire eight soldered in. And let's do the leg six wire. as it's soldered. Alright, so that's the last wire in. Glue gun point six. Looking back at our install diagram, I just noticed we've got a 6 here, and we've got the 8 here, and then hidden in this top corner there is a 1, which we didn't spot before, and it's going to a voltage regulator. So we're going to do that point now. And we'll put some more tape down to uh, completely insulate the chip, and then we'll put some uh, hot glue on that last point up there. I'm going to glue this last point here. And I'm also going to glue that wire down there next to the other silicon glue just to hold it in place, really. Right, wire management. Also, this button here uh, tells the PlayStation if the lid is open or closed. So I'm going to permanently close it in case I want to do any disc swapping with action replays and the like. Because on the old PlayStations you could use a spring, but these ones 
you can't so let's permanently put it down and then add some glue There we go. So it's always glued down now. Heat shield. And same as before, we're going to hold it in the air while we connect this ribbon cable. And then slot it into place and connect the other. Connect the other ribbon cable. Uh, new bit of tape to replace the old bit of tape. Lid on. And we secure your screws. So I'll do that and come back to you. Right, so the unit is now fully reassembled. So I'll we'll take it over to our console spot. Flip it in place. Okay. So to test it with a backup, first we must make a backup. So we're going to back up this game, Final Fantasy VII. Um, got this one here. I'm going to pop it in the PC. So in Image Burn, we're going to select Create Image File from Disk, which is this second option here, second option on the left. So we click this, and we select our drive, which is Drive D, and it has a look at the disk. It sees it's a CD-ROM, and we just click this big button here. And it's going to write that to an image file, a bin file. And while it's doing that, we'll take a CDR, We've got some tracks data, gold tops, and we shall write upon it a Final Fantasy VII Disc 1. It's almost finished reading the disc, and as you can see, we've got PSX, we've got the region there, PAL, and we've got the title Final Fantasy VII Disc 1. So when it's finished reading the disc to an image file, we're going to write it to our recordable disc so it successfully read the disc and we now select write image file to disc and we click this little box here and we browse to the image file we just created which is here open the Q file not the bin, oh, I automatically did it for us it's smart now, write speed. I always select the slowest speeds possible. 2.4x is what I'm going to go for. And always make sure you check Vertify there to make sure your burns are good. And click Burn. Okay, so that was a successful vertification. Now let's test it. Let's insert it into our PSX. Right, so what I've done now is I've... Um, Hot tweaked it because it wasn't reading the disc very well. Um, I'm going to give it a test up now. So I'll power it up. Uh, power on our pad. There we go. And it's booting. Also, it's making much better read sounds. The laser isn't straining this time. Boot straight away. straight into the game. And we'll just watch some of the cutscene so you can see it's smooth. Previously it was rather jerky. Got a new game. Watch the opening cutscene. It's playing fine now. With no stutters and no jerks. And as you can see by the PS1 unit it's no longer straining to read the disc, it's reading the disc flawlessly. So, successful modification. Um, check underneath the video for links to the hex used and for install diagrams. And feel free to post any questions or comments. See you in the next video.